call uh, yourself Dr. Mike? Yeah. Well, it's my name, so. <laughs> wow. What's up, guys? I've made my way to LA for the Streamy Awards, and I decided to take this opportunity to do another curbside consult like you've been asking for. But instead of LA edition, I decided to do Santa Monica edition. As you can see, legendary Santa Monica peer behind me. I'm about to run around and answer some questions. Are you ready? Do you guys want to be in a YouTube video? No. You sure? Health? Health related? No? Sir, would you like to be in a YouTube video? You sure? Think about it. Five million subscribers. Come on, answering health questions. Oh, my man's a baller. I love it. What do you think you can do better to improve your sleep? I, I don't know. I have a really hard time sleeping, so that's... I, I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like I've tried everything. Do you use your cell phone before bed? Um, mostly I'll just like put on YouTube and like try to fall asleep. Do you put on night shift mode on your phone? No. Okay. I highly recommend that. Do you know why? Because night shift mode reduces the amount of blue light your phone gives off. And blue light actually stops the hormone that helps you get sleepy called melatonin. Okay, yes. Yeah, I had no idea about blue light. I see. Actually a doctor. <laughs> certified. What's your YouTube channel? Dr. Mike. Dr. Mike? Good luck getting famous. Thanks. Appreciate it. Do the jiggle. Do the jiggle. Do the jiggle. This is how we stay warm. What's her name? Pixie. Pixie, what's up? Pixie, do you have a medical question for me? Is it true that if you get the flu shot, like getting injected with the flu shot, okay. that you're less likely to actually get the flu? Great. I'm so happy you asked that. Like, I get hyped when people ask that question. Yes, you're less likely to get the flu. In fact, generally, because we have to predict the strains, we drop the percentage that you're going to get the flu 40 to 60%. And if you get it each consecutive flu season, the flu shot I mean, you're gonna get even better results. Man, would you like to be in a YouTube video about health? No, no you sure? Okay. What are you doing? Like, like I, what am I doing on the street? Yeah, like I'm really cold. What are you doing? What question have you always wanted to get answered by a doctor? Anything, health, nutrition. I don't know, I just WebMD everything. Yeah, but I, I'm WebMD right now. Hands are always cold. Okay. Literally always cold. Always cold. Yes, always cold, why? Do they turn blue first of all? It's a good question yeah. for me. Okay, do, do you have good circulation, you would think? Let's see, I don't know. You don't know? I know. I what know. about like blood flow to your feet? Do your feet always get cold? Yeah, they're always cold. Okay, so two things can happen. There's something called Raynaud's phenomenon. Have you heard about that? No. Okay, so I'm not saying that you have this and I'm not diagnosing you with this, but it could be something that's going on. Raynaud's phenomenon is when your body has an overreaction to cold temperature. Your body wants to preserve warmth, right? That's how you survive. So if you go outside and it's cold somewhere, your body redirects blood away from useless things like your fingers and brings it into your organs. So your body could be having an overreaction to the cold, over constricting your blood vessels in your hands, feet, all that, and bringing it to so your inner organs, which is actually a good thing. Because if you're ever trapped in the wild, guess who's gonna survive better, you or someone with warm hands? Me. Yeah, there you go. So what do you say to people who've been trying to lose weight for a while? They've been doing a great job, but they've hit a plateau, okay. pretty stuck. Well, plateau is interesting because it actually truly happens to a lot of people, yeah. especially because fat essentially becomes your own organ. Mm -hmm. It's kind of weird to think about it that way, but it sets up its own blood supply. It sets up its own hormonal uh, system where it actually doesn't want you to burn it off. Mm -hmm. It wants to survive. Mm -hmm. So for those people, I try and take a look at what's going on in their life outside of their exercise and nutrition habits. The, the thing that people mess up most on is sleep. They don't get enough sleep. Yeah. And then the next thing, which most people don't think about with weight loss at all, is their mental health. Do you know what the real secret is to putting on muscle? No. Eating enough protein and calories. So that's the number one mistake my patients make. They'll go to the gym, they'll do the right exercises, but they don't eat enough. Ideally, you will have one and a half grams of protein per kilogram of your body weight. I'll answer any question, literally. She's a nurse. Oh, also she has all the answers already. That's cheating. Yeah. Like, why do you think a fever fights off a virus? I have no idea. See, good, this is good yeah, stuff, right? Know, yeah. So the reason why we get a fever is because viruses can't replicate, they can't function well at high temperatures. Okay. Neither really can our cells, that's why we don't like fevers and we yeah. feel rotten, but we much rather fight off the virus with this high fever allow it to stop replicating, kill it off, and then you can recover. And it, that's why it takes a few days afterwards of getting rid of the symptoms to even feel 100% well. Yeah. But it's good that we're getting a fever. That means our immune system is working. We're fighting things off. And in general, if you're ever concerned, the answer is always to contact your pediatrician or family yeah, medicine doctor. For sure. Chocolate. Chocolate? <laughs> Boom. All right, good job. The next day. Now we're at Venice Boardwalk. It got a little warmer. 
I changed an outfit, changed the venue. Let's see if we could find some people to answer some questions. Beep, whoop. We're from Toronto, Canada. Oh, okay. T dot representing. I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, we don't call it that anymore. No, you don't. Wait, I, that's all. My old. Is that what's happening? I didn't say you were old. I just think like, the slang is old. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, yeah. so I need to update my. What is it? The six? Yeah, the that's six. that's six. more or just Toronto. What fad diet do you think is legit for actually losing weight? Well, I think that's a trick question because you already said it's a fad diet. So all fad diets are really crash diets that are not healthy for you in the long term because. For the most part, people don't stick with them because they are crash diets. The one that's getting some popularity that I wouldn't call fad, that I like personally, is called intermittent fasting. Not one, a fan. No? Why is that? No. You like eating? Uh, yeah, I like eating. <laughs> How are you? I'm a real doctor answering people's medical questions. Do you have any health questions you like answered? Where are you guys from? Russia. Oh, <laughs> are you the handsome YouTube doctor? Uh, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. I believe I'll so. I'll take that out. Yeah. <laughs> this is my once a year soda. Okay. I actually cut sugary drinks in 2017. Wow. And I feel great. I drink water until, until today. And then today. <laughs> the one day. I meet handsome YouTube doctor. <laughs> like, thanks. That's all right. I'll buy it. This is a one time cheat meal. This is your che cheat drink. Cheat drink. I have a question about lipomas. Okay, good. Good question. Uh, they're, they're common, so I hear. I have one of them on my shoulder and it's been irritating me with my posture and stuff, but I haven't had a chance to look further into it or see what I need to do to get removed, what the procedure's like, what the costs are like. The first step with lipomas is to make sure that it is a lipoma. That takes a doctor taking a looking at it, evaluating, perhaps even poking at it, doing all sorts of things. Once you have the diagnosis of lipoma, generally they don't do anything. They don't bother you until their size becomes big enough that it messes with your posture. When you lay down, it puts pressure. Now, here's the tricky part. Insurance companies technically, or at least most of the time, don't pay for a complex lipoma removal unless it's causing some other issue. I see. So when you go see your doctor, make sure to explain to them that this is really bothersome. It's affecting your sleep. It's affecting your quality of life because only then will the insurance company say, okay, then the risk is worth the benefit. Understood. Yeah. So that's a little strategy piece. For that's lipomas. an extremely helpful tip. Why so many doctors say they find this cure for cancer? And so many kids been crying out for help. What about the medication for the younger youths them now? What about that? One of, cancer. one of the biggest problems with cancer research is that we're putting all the money to do research for adult cancers and not enough money goes to research for children's cancers. Isn't that crazy? That we research more adult cancers than children's cancers. The idea though, and my hope is, that by finding the cure for one cancer or making treatment for one cancer, we can then use that for other cancers as well. It's not gonna work for all of them, but I'm hoping that's the case. All the things them that you're finding for different, different stuff, it's just one thing because it's just new cause. Yeah. So cancer is whatever is new cause. So, you Describe know, what new once you is. don't go to Dr. Swaby and check, check yeah. out his profile and see what he's using to, to, to cure all these Describe things. Describe the new cancer. What is that? Teach me. New, new cause is just a new cause. You, you don't know cancer. You're a doctor? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that is. But you know. But I want to know. So you know me. it. No, you know it. I do? Okay. Yeah.